everybody, we're going to worship God now, the song we did last week, My Lighthouse, so you should know the words. Um, this song is about how God is like a lighthouse in our life. If we are in a boat at sea and if we feel like our life is being splashed around by the storm, God can guide us safely in. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, won't walk out. really good song today we are going to be going on with our series on mission unstoppable we're really really glad you guys could join us i have been doing my lockdown in Stillboy. i don't know if some of you guys have been there it's a little town by the sea and i've been here with my husband and with my family and i've been baking and painting being a little bit lazy if i'm honest um, but I'm really missing seeing you guys and being in church and I know you guys are as well But it's really really cool that we can still do this online. I hope you enjoy this the video this week It's going to be about Paul and Barnabas and our story is going to be called our lesson is going to be called uh, to the ends of the earth and It's going to be about sharing the good news of Jesus. I know I'm trusting for a friend to be saved and I've been challenged this week to really just pray for him more and to be a little bit more bold when I speak to him, you know, to just kind of call it out and to not be ashamed or intimidated, you know, that I'm going to look stupid or um, seem simple. So I really hope that you guys can do that as well. Enjoy the lesson. I'm going to hand on over to Andrea now and she's going to be talking to us um, about Paul and Barnabas. Bye guys! Last week, we saw how Peter learned that the good news about Jesus is not only for Jewish people, but that God also chooses other people. Can you remember? Who did Peter think could never be chosen? Think a bit. Hmm, can you remember last week's lesson? That's right, Gentiles like Cornelius. Another question. What did God use to show Peter he was wrong? with unclean animals on it that God was saying um, 
was now all clean to eat, just like the good news is now for everyone, even unclean Gentiles, non-Jews. But right now, we are going to hand over to the lovely Meg, who is going to remind us of our memory verse. Over to you, Meg. Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well and that you guys are keeping busy with exercising and doing your schoolwork. So I've been keeping busy with also exercising and doing my loads and loads of schoolwork. So you all hopefully know the memory verse for the week. It is Act 2, verse 21. So I'm going to sing through it once and then you guys are going to go through it with me. So I'm going to sing it and then you guys are going to sing it. And then in the end, we're all going to do it together. So if you guys will please join me because I can't do this alone. And later, we will get the help from a special guest to teach you guys the memory verse song. Okay, so the song goes like this. Acts 2 verse 21. It says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, will be saved, will be saved. Okay, so now that you guys have heard it once, you guys are probably like, I need to know the song. With the help of my dog Zola, we're going to learn the song together. Okay, are you guys ready? Okay. So I'm going to sing and then you guys are going to sing after me. It goes like this. Okay, are you guys ready? Act 2 verse 21. It says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well done, everyone. Now we're going to do it all together. Okay, are you ready, Zara? She said yes. Okay. Act 2 verse 21. It says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, will be saved, will be saved. <laughs> well done, everyone. That is the memory verse for this week. What an amazing verse reminding us that there's salvation in his name. Let's hand over to Daniel with the lesson. Hey guys, I'm going to quickly take you through a recap of our past few weeks as well as reading through the uh, new passage of scripture, Acts chapter 14, verses 8 to 22, and then going over the story, looking at it in detail, and um, challenging you with a few questions. So to start off, I'm just going to recap quickly from the previous few weeks. So uh, we started off learning about Jesus' uh, promise to the apostles that the Holy Spirit would empower them to witness in Judea, um, Samaria and the ends of the world. Following this, we had the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost, enabling the apostles to speak in a multitude of languages and consequently convert 3,000 um, Jews and Gentiles to trust Jesus as their king. We then saw the apostles set out and uh, began spreading the good news mainly to their Jewish counterparts in the various areas surrounding Judea and Samaria. Um, let me just fix this chair before it squeaks more. In the process, the Jewish elite, the Sanhedrin, became threatened and jealous by the apostles' teachings and threatened them um, to stop teaching. To which Peter and John replied, to quote, Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. And then following this, we had the stoning of Stephen in Samaria after he challenged the Sanhedrin as well. Um, the stoning was overseen by Saul of Tarsus, which led into a full-on persecution of the church within Jerusalem, scattering the Christians. But it inadvertently caused them to proclaim the news of Jesus in new lands where they had taken refuge. And so we see the gospel um, spreading in Samaria and now the ends of the world. We then looked at the story of the God-fearing Ethiopian man that Philip baptized, uh, and this saw the, the news of Jesus consequently spreading to Africa for the first time. Then there was the radical conversion of Saul of Tarsus to Paul the Apostle. 
Following this, the gospel spread amongst the Gentiles after Peter received the revelation that all animals were now clean. Peter then said, God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. From this, the Jews grew to accept the Gentiles as, e as equals. And this leaves us uh, where we are today at Acts chapter 14, verses 8 to 22. So if you could just take out a Bible or um, anything to follow with me. Um, I would highly encourage that. So maybe pause the video now and find this passage of Scripture. So that's Acts chapter 14, verses 8 uh, to 22. So to begin. In Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Laconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. Um, so these people in Lystra literally thought that Barnabas and Paul were Greek gods. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to a living God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way, yet he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty in keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. Crazy. The next day he left and Barnabas, sorry, he and Barnabas left for Derb. Um, they then preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, the place where they had almost been stoned to death. Um, then they went to Iconium and Antioch strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Okay, guys, to continue now, uh, with your Bible still open, let's take a in-depth look at this passage. Okay, so it started off with Paul healing a lame man. And consequently, the locals uh, of Lystra thought Paul and Barnabas to be Greek gods. Now, um, God, this was not the response that God wanted. God knew it would happen because um, he is all known, but it's not the response he wanted. He didn't want the people of Lystra to worship th God's messenger as God, right? Um, rather, God wanted the people um, to turn from their sin and worship the one true God. Um, and it's always sad to see people worshipping fake gods, right? Gods that are not real instead of uh, worshipping the real God, right? The living God um, that, has been, that has been made known to us by Jesus, right? And his sacrifice. And this might seem obvious, but it might be a good thing to um, ruminate on about uh, God's messengers he's given us, you know? Uh, me teaching you now and the books we read and the pastors we listen to, it's important to know that they are just that. You know, we are humans, we are God's messengers, but we are not God. Um, and so it's important that we read and study our Bible um, ourselves and listen to others who love and believe in Jesus, um, but not worship them, you know. Um, but Paul and Barnabas knew this. Um, and so rather than being flattered, I mean, listen, it, it might have been tempting for them to take this as a, a compliment, let it go to their head. But 
um, being the God-fearing, spirit-driven people that they were, uh, they didn't. They didn't let it go to his head, to their head. They didn't let it feed into their egos. Um, but they preached. They preached to them about the real living God as revealed in Jesus Christ, who came and died on the cross for our sins. Now, unfortunately, as they struggled to convince the crowd of their lack of divinity, their enemies were still working to fight against them. Now, if you remember previously, they had just come from Antioch and um, Iconium, where there were plots to kill them. And because of these plots, they had left. And it seemed that these enemies, these people that wanted uh, them dead, had followed them to Lystra. And once they arrived there, they riled up the crowd and turned the crowd who was worshipping them, uh, that's Barnabas and Paul as gods, they came and riled the crowd up to persecute them. Um, it's you know quite amazing to think how this crowd who was worshiping them, worshiping them as a god, you know, they were about to slaughter cattle in their name and worship them, and all of a sudden they're persecuting them and they're stoning Paul, and Paul almost dies. And the same thing actually happened to Jesus, right? Jesus experienced the same kind of treatment when he was on earth. On Palm Sunday, um, you can go look it up if you want. It's John chapter uh, 12, verse 13. On Palm Sunday, um, the people were waving palm branches and praising Jesus as he rode into Jeru uh, Jerusalem, calling him king, saying, um, yeah, calling him king, praising him, saying that he was the Messiah. And then the following week, those same people um, from the crowd were crying out for them to be crucified, right? Look at John chapter 19, verse 6. After being stoned, after the crowd turned on Paul and stoned him and took him outside the city and chucked him out to leave him to die, um, the believers gathered around Paul's body, thinking he was dead. But to their surprise, Paul got back up and walked, walked right back into Lystria. Um, Paul and Barnabas then left the next day from uh, Lystria and went to Derb. Um, in Derb, they found great success and many people turned to Christ. Um, and when it was time to leave Derb, Paul and Barnabas knew uh, that it was time to return to the believers in the Antioch church where they began their missionary journey. Now, the Holy Spirit had given Paul courage even when he was persecuted and mistreated by his enemies. Paul did not fear death because he knew that nothing would happen to him until the work God had for him on this earth was done. He also knew that when God took him from this life on earth through death, he would live forever with Jesus in heaven. Paul and Barnabas did not take the easy way home. That was not God's plan for them. Instead, they tra traveled back to each city that they had stopped at and shared the good news. Now, from the scripture, we know that our proclaiming um, of the gospel will result in persecution and suffering. Now, this isn't a great thought, you know. I, I don't want to go out, proclaim the gospel and be persecuted against, embarrassed, made fun of, mocked. Um, and yet, this is what the Bible is kind of warning us of, right? The Bible is showing us that regardless of whether we're Jesus, whether the Son of God, um, perfect, or Peter, which might be a bit more relatable for us, you know, um, being a human being, um, we will be persecuted. And the New Testament shows this throughout. Um, yeah, Jesus and the early apostles are persecuted for their beliefs, even after being previously venerated, right? Paul was worshipped as a god, and then he was turned on and almost stoned to death. Jesus was worshipped in Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And the next week, those same people were shouting for him to be crucified. You know, people are fickle, and we can take faith in God and his plan. Um, and the Bible does encourage us still um, to be uh, joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. God acknowledges our suffering and calls on us to trust him, trust in him. And we can take faith that being confident that he who, who began a good work in us will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. 
friends, take strength in this promise. This is a promise. You know, it's not a fickle, this isn't a story. Um, these promises of the Bible, we are expected to take seriously. And, and with this, we can take heart. Um, having said all this, I want to leave you with a few questions to ponder. Um, and they are as follows. If you had just been stoned and left for dead for no other reason than explaining the truth about Jesus, what would you do next? What would you say to yourself and how would you feel? When thinking about this question, think about what you can achieve on your own and what you can achieve by God's guiding spirit. Okay, give that a thought. The second question and the last question I want you to ruminate over is the following. How does this story encourage you? Are you inspired by Paul or convinced he's crazy? Give that a think or two. Now, we all know what the answer is, right? This that this story um, is, you know, how we should behave. Like in the face of danger, we should face it head on with faith. But we also need to acknowledge our real human emotions and experiences. You know, we we mustn't pretend they're not there. So really let these questions challenge you and really think about how you really feel and then maybe talk about how you should react in these situations or what you think you should do. With that, guys, that's all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'm sure you'll see my face again. So much for your amazing good news that spread, even though there were lots of opposition. Lord, give us confidence that we can be faithful in talking about you because you are in control. Lord, remind us that you are winning, despite those people who are trying to oppose a message about you. Lord, we praise you because you are powerful and on the throne. Thank you for this awesome series and all the fun we've had learning about you together, even though it was a bit different to what we used to. Give us a good week, Lord, and keep us all safe. In your powerful name we pray. Amen.